Nature is uh, the great teacher. All human gurus are simply uh, distillations of the wave of nature that is coming at you. So you can just short circuit the whole human boil down and go straight to the executive suite by putting yourself under a tree in the wilderness. I mean, they all have said this, but they need to be taken more seriously on the subject of their own expendability. Me too. <laughs> Going to the Amazon with these kinds of notions and looking at what had been achieved there, I, I came to have a vision then of the future that could be that we are sort of hurling ourselves into a new stone age where the, the fruits of the prodigal wandering that I discussed in such detail last night can be used to infuse new meaning into that paradise. The, the imagination of man and woman is so incomparably rich and so and exerts such an attraction on us as the builder monkey that we have to honor that we cannot demonize that and and uh, and preach a kind of naturalism that if actually put in place would cause the starvation of tens of millions of people we have passed the point where some kind of Luddite reform can save us. It's only, I think, very self-indulgent elites that can preach voluntary simplicity because a lot of people are experiencing involuntary simplicity. And uh, unless you're one of them, it rings rather hollow to, to be told that Zen values are, uh, are best. So I think that Reinserting ourselves into nature is uh, inspiration for cultural design. That's what it is. It's not flight from the design process, but a reinvigoration of it. And uh, some of you may be aware of the concept of nanotechnology, where everything is built at the molecular level. We, by studying the mechanisms of the cell and the immune system and DNA, we begin to have a picture of how molecules and atoms are the machine parts of a microcosmic world that if we were elf chemists, we could make our way into and create anything that we could imagine. I mean, I can foresee a world where all machines will be made like by DNA like polymers that will code base materials into larger and larger aggregates. Uh, the miniaturization of our world is a great frontier. As culture becomes more enveloping, its physical manifestation should become less uh, material, you see. So the ultimate notion is of the world turned back to the form it held, let's say, 35,000 years ago, where people live in an environment of entirely climaxed natural perfection. However, behind their eyelids lies a culturally and consensually validated data phase space that is culture, civilization. Turn each of us into a telepathic aquarium to, that has a direct pipeline to the general ocean of mind and being. This is possible. In fact, it's not only possible, it may be the only uh, decent solution to download ourselves into another dimension.
And I want to note in passing the collapse of Max Headroom. What a tragedy. I think that is that his last show was last night. Uh, this was a weird force for cultural transformation, but to be applauded. Uh, if anybody here tonight has anything to do with it, uh, I wish them luck. But this sort of notion, you know, people, um, the Max Headroom people and the William Gibson people have a very high tech take on this because they're interested in accentuating this tight blue jeans cyberpunk kind of notion but in fact the worlds that they describe will have many many different social subgroups and social ecosystems forming in them what the future really means is a choice to become who we are to flower out to find our own way. McLuhan saw all this 20 years ago. He said that the, the rise of global electronic feudalism would create an atomistic fragmentation of culture. It may well be that within 50 years, the largest uh, organizational entity on the planet will be corporations with a few million loyal employees and all larger social institutions will have disappeared because they don't command loyalty in a, uh, in a uh, social environment where direct experience has become empowered. And this empowering of direct experience, this return to the feminine, this uh, legitimizing of the presence of the vaster regions of the unconscious, these are all aspects of this emerging paradigm of the spirit. Understanding and imagination in the light of nature, which is what this two-night party has been called, is a definition of the spirit understanding and imagination in the light of nature in other words true understanding poetic imagination standing as a mirror before nature as object will cause the hologrammatic presence of the spirit to magically appear it will be then seen to be a kind of emergent quality of the situation that was previously masked simply because the elements had not fallen into the correct uh, arrangement. And I think, you know, as we move forward through time over the next 25 years, there will be many prophets of the transcendental object at the end of time, many takes. The important thing, I think, is to recall Gödel's incompleteness theorem and to always recognize the provisional nature of the metaphysical goods that you're going to be sold. Nobody has the faintest notion of what's going on. It's important to keep that in mind. If you have that in mind, everything else, then the game proceeds much more cleanly. Uh, what is ahead of us is true high adventure. The essence of it is its unknowability. Its promise is transformation. Its theater of occurrence is the here and now. We are not waiting for it to begin. It has already happened for us and our job is to understand how that can be so. Plato said time is the moving image of eternity. My notion of shamanism is it is a, that state of mind which accrues to those who have seen the end. By cultivating this, no, this notion of closure with hyperspace imaged as the archaic return to the world of the pre-cultural ambiance, we can have an anticipation of the transcendental object. It is still in Eden. It is we who have undergone the fall and the recurso. And now, the laden prodigal returns to beat at the doors 
of the manorial home, the birthright. And within, I think, lies uh, the beginnings of true civilization. We are the forerunners of a truly moral and ethical human society. The deepest aspirations, however badly mangled and mishandled by our traditions, nevertheless still have the potential for archetypal fruition within them. The torch that has been passed from generation to generation ad infinitum back into the distant past is alive. And by some strange quirk of the metaphysical machinery, it's our great privilege to live through this cemetery break, this revelation of the next level of the open-ended mystery. And I think that the real thrill lies in relating to it with an open mind, a sense of caring, a sense of wonder, and a, a sense of real, grounded, intellectually firm uh, hope.